Hola, greetings, beautiful people. How's everyone doing? Our cozy cottage here, Queen Bee, your host. I am here with you to read a few more chapters of You Know What, Little Woman. Yes, we laugh off on what? Yes, chapter 26 on the shelf. Hi's everyone. It is Friday night and um, I'm just chilling, relaxing. I decided to come home, not do much. I did a few things earlier, but it wasn't much. And I said, I'm just gonna eat, sit back and chill. I got me some water and I'm going to cozy up and have a date with my beautiful people out there and read some more of Little Woman. So let's get started. I'm not going to hold you long. Um, I just want to try to at least read three chapters, okay? Here we go. Chapter 26, On the Shelf. Meg's maternal instinct was very strong and she was entirely absorbed in her little children. John missed the wifely attentions he was used to, but as he adored his babies, he made no complaint. But three months passed, and Meg looked worn and nervous. The babies absorbed every minute of her time. The house was neglected, and so was her husband. Uh-oh. He bore it very patiently for six months and then looked for comfort elsewhere. Scott, John's friend, had married and Mrs. Scott was a lively, pretty, agreeable girl. So he went to their house more often than not. Hmm. And gradually, May began to miss John and feel that she was not as attractive as before. When she complained to her mother, Marmee said, you have only made the mistake that most young wives make forgotten your duty to your husband and your love for your children. Don't neglect husband for children. Don't shut him out of the nursery, but let him have more to do with the management of Demi. Then let Hannah come and help you. You need the exercise. Hannah would enjoy the rest and John would find his wife again. Meg thought it over, found it was a very good idea, and acted upon it. It took a little while for her to get it right, but when she really did it, John did not appear to object. The children thrived under the paternal rule while Meg recovered her spirits and got wholesome exercise, a little pleasure, and much confidential conversation with her sensible husband. Home grew home-like again. Meg learned that a woman's happiest kingdom is home, and her highest honor, the art of ruling, not as a queen, but as a wise wife and mother. Chapter 27. Lazy Lawrence. Lori went to Nice, France. Intending to stay a week and remain a month, he was tired of wandering around. Amy's familiar presence added charm to foreign lands, but to Amy, Lori didn't seem as a good man. I'm sorry. But to Amy, Laurie didn't seem as good a man as he was before. But the two never quarreled. Amy was too well-bred, and just now Laurie was late, too lazy. Laurie, when are you going to your grandfather's? She asked. Very soon. You have said that a dozen times within the last three weeks. What would Joe say? If she saw you now, asked Amy, starting to draw Laurie as he lounged next to her. 
as usual, go away, Teddy, I'm busy. I wish you'd do me the favor to rouse yourself a little, Amy said sharply. I have a new name for you. It's Lazy Lawrence. Why, if you please? Because with every chance for being good, useful, and happy, you are faulty. <laughs> Lazy and miserable. I know I have no right to talk so to you, Laurie, but we are all so fond and proud of you. I couldn't bear to think this should be disappointed in you at home as I have been. You knew perfectly well I never cared for anyone but Joe, Laurie said. I did think so, but as they never said anything about it and you went away, I suppose I was mistaken. And Joe wouldn't be kind to you. Why? I was sure she loved you dearly. She was kind, but not in the right way. And it's lucky for her she didn't love me. If I'm the good-for-nothing fellow you think me, it's her fault, though, and you may tell her so. I was wrong. I didn't know. I'm very sorry. I was so cross, but I can't help wishing you bear it better, Teddy, dear. Laurie felt as if suddenly shaken out of a pensive dream and could not sleep again. He sat up and asked slowly, Do you think Joe would despise me as you do? Yes, if she saw you now. She hates lazy people. <laughs> Neither spoke for several minutes. Then Amy showed Lori her sketch of him, saying, How do you like that? He looked, and then he smiled. It was very good. The long, lazy figure on the grass with listless face, half-shut eyes, and one hand holding a cigar from which came a little wreath of smoke. As you are, this is as you were, Amy showed him another sketch. Only a rough sketch of Lori taming a horse. Hat and coat were off, and every line of the active figure, face, and attitude was full of energy and meaning. Lori said nothing, but as his eyes went from one to the other, Amy saw him flush and fold his lips together. I found that sketch in my portfolio the other day, touched it up, and kept it to show you, she said. Much obliged. You've improved immensely since then. Lori rose as he spoke, returned the pictures with a smile, and looked at his watch. They laughed and chatted all the way home, but neither of them was happy. Goodbye, dear, Lori said, and with these words, he left her. The next morning, Amy received a note from him. Please say goodbye for me to your aunt, Lazy Lawrence, has gone, has gone to his grandpa. A pleasant winter to you. Good boy. I'm glad he's gone, said Amy. But she added with a sigh, but how shall I miss him? But how I shall miss him. One more? One more. Chapter 28. The Valley of the Shadow. When the first feelings of sadness were over, the family accepted what was going to happen to Beth and tried to bear it cheerfully. They put aside their grief and tried to make that last year a happy one for her. The nicest room in the house was Beth's and had everything that she most Love, flowers, pictures, her piano, the little work table, the cats, father's best books, mother's easy chair, Joe's desk, and Amy's finest sketches. And every day, Meg brought her babies to visit. John quietly saved money to buy her the fruit she loved and longed for. Old Hannah cooked for her every day, and from Amy 
came little gifts and cheerful letters. Here sat Beth, tranquil and busy as ever. The first few, the first few months were very happy ones. And Beth often used to look around and say, How beautiful this is! As they all sat together in her sunny room, the babies kicking and crowing on the floor, mother and sisters working near, and father reading in his pleasant voice. Soon Beth said the needle was. Soon Beth said the needle was so heavy. Talking tired her, faces troubled her, the pain grew as her body got weaker. Beth's soul grew stronger. Joe stayed with her all the time since Beth had said, I feel stronger when you are here. Joe learned all about patience and charity, loyalty and duty. Often Joe found Beth reading her Bible, singing softly, and sometimes crying without any sound at all. One night Beth found a little poem in Joe's scribble. Poor Joe. She's fast asleep, so I won't wake her. She shows me all her things, and I don't think she'll mind if I look at this, thought Beth. This is the poem that Joe wrote. My Beth, sitting patient in the shadow, till the blessed light shall come, a serene and saintly presence sanctifies our troubled home. Earthly joys and hopes and sorrows break like ripples on the strand of the deep and solemn river where her willing feet now stand. Give me, for I, for I need it sorely, that courage wise and sweet which has made the path of duty green beneath your willing feet. Give me that unselfish nature that with charity divine can pardon wrong for love's dear sake. Meek heart, forgive me mine. The poem brought Beth great comfort as she sat with the paper in her hands. The charred log fell apart. Joe woke up, revived the blaze and looked at her sister. Not asleep, but so happy. See, I found this and read it. I knew you wouldn't care. Have I been all that to you, Joe? She asked. Oh, Beth, very much. Very much, Joe cried. Then I don't feel as if I wasted my life. And now, when it's too late to begin even to do better, it's such a comfort to know that someone loves me so much and feels as if I've helped them. I shall be your Beth still to love and help you more than ever. You must take my place, Joe, and be everything to father and mother when I'm gone. I try, Beth, Joe then promised. So the spring days came and went, the earth got greener and the birds came back in time to say goodbye to Beth. As she had hoped, the tide went out easily and in the dark hour before dawn, held in her mother's arms, she quietly died. Wow. I'm gonna end with that chapter. Our next chapter is chapter 29, Learning to Forget. Wow. She passed away. Guys, the movie of this book is really good. I have to say, you've got to see the movie. It was on the PBS channel when I looked at it. I'm sure it could be on, could be on YouTube. It could be on um prime video something like that but it's a really good movie and and the movie came and derived from the book i believe
But anyway, that's um, it for tonight. We read three chapters. We have a few more chapters to go, not much. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Another date. As always, never give up. God can deliver you from anything. He can deliver you from anything. If it's his will, just never give up on him. Always keep God in your life. Keep him first. I love you guys. Lord willing. See you soon.